When I decided to fly back to Malaysia from Singapore, spending some three years after my graduation, it was really, really a leap of faith. Who wants to return to Malaysia and get paid at a much lower rate than the lucrative salary in Singapore? My friends were like, are you serious about that? Now, I've always lamented how young people like you and I who were sidelined by the system, and unless you have the right connection of relationship, you will never find your way to the top of the chain and be among the top echelons. I graduated in nursing and went straight to Singapore to embark on a new journey for a start. But the situation back home in Malaysia was the major motivation for me to return home and make a change. I know that there is something that I can do and I told myself if more and more young Malaysians leave the country to seek greener pastures elsewhere, what is left for Malaysia where our parents are still at home? It was the year 2014, and if you remember that particular year, it was a year of disasters. A very eventful year after the 13th January elections that many young Malaysians, including myself, spent thousands of ringgit on flight tickets just to fly home in Kuching to cast my vote. That election was the pivotal point in my life when I made the decision to return to Malaysia and join the leading independent news media, Malaysia Kini. That year was certainly a crazy year with a missing MH370, Anwar Ibrahim getting jailed for the second time, the untimely fatal accident of the late Kapal Singh, the Julutong Tiger, who was the chairman of DAP, MH17 getting shot down in Ukraine. The whole political and media landscape in Malaysia was changing. What happened next is history. And God knows, I was there in the newsroom at the right time and at the right moment. I never knew I would actually find my calling to be a journalist instead of a nurse. But do you know what is the similarity between the two? You deal with people and you can make a change. I was born in a not so small city of Kuching and I picked up the habit of reading newspapers since I was young. I wasn't a big fan of reading newspapers and at first as, and as I grew up and observed my family and their habits of reading newspapers every single morning with a cup of coffee. And we had two English newspaper subscriptions at home back then. Imagine the first thing you do when you wake up is to pick up the papers and go through every single page. What was printed on papers then was the cardinal truth of the issues discussed around the country. We had no other means of assessing other information aside from newspapers, televisions and radio. The internet came only much later in the mid-90s. Imagine trying to get connected with the 56k modem and it was quite expensive then. Fast forward to today, what changed? Being informed and choosing to be informed or are we at a state where there is too much to read or we choose not to read instead? Do we know who controls or dictates what we read? The influential powers that be controlling the narratives of we, the people ought to know? Who runs the newsroom and who owns them? Are those in power covering up a series of wrongdoings and corruption, painting only the rosy pictures to the people? Is our media independent to report without fear or favour? To answer all these questions, it is about time to restore media as the fourth pillar of democracy, the fourth estate. The youths of today are becoming more and more apathetic to politics in the country. But how do we work on restoring the youth in politics? The median age of Malaysians today, with about 32 million people in the country now, stands at 28.9 years according to the Department of Statistics Malaysia. And now, our 2020 census started in July last year. We are heading to an aging society in Malaysia and we are projected to increase to 3.3 million people of those aged 60 and above. About 40% of the electorate for the general election held in 2018 were between 21 and 39 years old, but only 12% were elected to the parliament. Is the voice of youth truly represented in the Dewan Rakyat or even Dewan Negara? The question that I would like to put out to many Malaysians out there, are we saddled with political dinosaurs or should we make our voices heard by standing up to our, to our principles? How will young Malaysians, together with journalists, work together in democratizing the country forward? 
Just a year ago, the Black Lives Matter protests erupted all over the United States of America. The incident of George Floyd's death, an African-American who was killed by the police, sparked much anger and dissatisfaction across the country. People of colour faced much discrimination over centuries in the US and even after the historic passing of the Civil Rights Act in 1964 that outlaws discrimination based on race, colour, religion, sex, national origin and later sexual orientation and gender identity. Many are being discriminated against until today. Here's a story of Eddie Binford Ross, a 17-year-old journalist of Clypean a South Salem High School's newspaper. Like many journalists who covered the protests in Portland, she too was in the front lines getting gas shoved around. Eddie is the editor-in-chief of the high school newspaper. At that time, tensions at the protests were high as authorities unleashed the use of tear gas, stun grenades, pepper spray, and other aggressive tactics against the demonstrators. Remember, she's 17. She was not shy from standing tall among the other journalists to report from the ground. Firstly, we have to understand the power of journalism and how to use that to influence to write compelling stories and giving voice to the voiceless in our society. I think many would know that despite continuous intimidation, threats, even discouragement from family and friends, the spirit of many journalists I met in Malaysia and around the region spurred my interest and passion even more. Where are we today when it comes to press freedom in Malaysia? So according to Reporters Without Borders, the Annual Press Freedom Index, Malaysia is currently categorized as not free. There has been an improvement in our rankings with opening up the space for the press after historic general election in 2018. However, the long list of draconian laws that stifle freedom of the press are still there, and they are open to abuse by those in power. A free press does not mean the media can simply report or publish stories without facts, or based on speculations or rumours. All journalists are bound to a code of ethics and reminded of the responsibility of their roles to serve interests of the public and educating the society. Unfortunately, Media is not entirely free in Malaysia. It is still shackled by ownership of political parties and people with self-vested interests where only the few can survive as an independent media. As I mentioned before, the press is regarded as the fourth estate. In its capacity of advocacy and implicit ability to frame political issues, influencing and shaping society. No press or media is perfect or free from weaknesses. But the struggle to report without fear or favour, without intimidation and threats, is real. Whether you're still studying or working, maybe a journalist like what I'm doing right now, never be afraid of speaking up and standing up to power. There will be those who tell you that you're inexperienced, yet to work in the real world, or trying to use condescending remarks. Never back down from those kind of comments. As we speak, our minds use our wisdom to speak or write, but also listen with our conscience. We are a young country just over 50 years after forming the Federation together as Malaysians. But I think we have much work to do. Allow me to share this quote with you. The founder and editor of Rappler, Maria Ressa, once said, The fight for human rights is at the core of liberal democracies. This is critical to your future. You have the intellect the time, and I hope the idealism to fight. Life is like revolving doors. At times, some doors are closed while another door appears. Making every step matters to you and think about the impact you can make for the betterment of the society and the country. Young people must seize the power in the media space and tell our story. Thank you.